Hello, my dear Hungry viewers. Today we'll talk about every New Yorker staple, Bagel and his little less known brother, Bialy. Let's dig in! The history of Bagel begins in the Central Europe in Poland, at the beginning of the 17th century among Ashkenazi Jews that lived there. The most probable city of origin was Krakow, the former capital of Poland. And till this point, everyone more or less agrees with this story. But if you dig deeper, you'll find that there are actually two different origin theories that exclude each other. One is that at the beginning of the 17th century, in 1610, in the laws of Krakow community regulations, there you'll find texts describing the tradition of giving bagels to the woman who recently gave birth. The other one is that at the end of the 17th century, the bagel came to Poland from Vienna. It was a gift from a baker who wanted to thank Polish king, John Sobieski III, for defeating the Turks. Well, if I was to judge, I'd ask how the Krakow Jews would have learned about such a unique gift to make it their own daily bread. How would they know the recipe? The first mentioning I already told you about is from 1610, not 70 years later. For me, case closed. So, we have the time. Now, place. Why Poland not uh, mentioned Austria? Because Poland had the most liberal laws concerning other religions, other than Catholicism, that is, in the whole Europe, since Middle Ages even, and that is why Jews found shelter there. Hey people, you didn't expect that I would really do them, right? What is so unique in a bagel? It is boiled, later baked, and has a hole in the middle. Why so much effort for a simple roll? Again, it's history. This time dark ages. And there's a reason why they were dark. Jews didn't really have an easy life back then in Europe. Suffice it to say that their bread had to be different than Christians, so they wouldn't mix. Therefore, one glance on a roll and you know it is a bagel. But apart from the painful history, there is more to it. They are boiled before they are baked, so this method gives them their unique chewy texture. Ok, but why do bagels have a hole in the middle? Apart from aesthetics, it is easier to store, carry and sell them if they are placed on a long stick or a rod, as it was in the past. Bagels are so popular in the USA, are they popular in Poland as well? The answer is no. The Jews before and after World War II migrated to the United States and took their baking recipes with them. Astonishingly, it is as if they physically took bagels from the streets of Poland, even though the bagels were very popular among non-Jews. Now you cannot buy them as it was before war, uh, from a street seller. Today, American-styled bagels in Poland are sold in specialty shops. For example, in uh, 2010, Wall Street Journal did a little expedition to Krakow in search for a bagel. What they found is obważanek. In Polish, this name derives from a verb uh, which in English means parboil. So, it is also a boiled and later baked roll with a hole in the middle, but it is made from two twined pieces of dough and a hole is not carved like in a bagel, but made by gluing the ends. It is also eaten without cutting it in two and spreading butter like it is with bagels. You eat it alone like a pretzel. Obważanek Krakowski 
is a registered name in the whole European Union. To make it, you have to have an official license. And the reason for that is, the Polish baker, quoted by the newspaper, was tired of explaining to the tourists uh, what, uh, that what he sells is not a bagel, but something similar. Almost ready! Big steamy bagels! But why are they so popular in the USA, but uh, not only among Jewish communities? It has much to do with an old saying, where two sides fight, the third wins. In 1951, the New York City bagel bakers went on strike. Well, it doesn't mean much if you do not know what a bagel is. And New York Times covering this strike in one of its articles explained it to the readers. Hmm, it must have been pretty delicious description. Quote, glazed surface troll with the firm white dough. Because after that, eating bagels caught on like hell. And now, to the oven, time for baking. Enough to say that in the 1960s, the Polish baker from Lublin, Harry Lender, who opened in Connecticut the first bagel factory outside New York, started machine production of frozen bagels. Later, his company was also the first one to sell them pre-cut. Of course, we were to mention Montreal bagels, which are sweeter than American and very popular there. Funny fact, each Sunday on ER, the majority of injuries are from failed bagel cuts. <coughs> Most of those are sustained when people are trying to cut a frozen bagel. Voila, they are ready and smell of heaven. And now, what do you get when dough falls on the floor, somebody steps on it and instead of throwing it away, adds onions, poppy seeds and bakes it? A bialy. At least, more or less, that is how Mimi Sheraton described it in her book from 2000, The Bialy Eaters. Name Bialy means in Polish light, and it is not about the color, but the name of the Polish city it is from, Bialystok, one of the cities where Jewish community once was even in majority of the whole population. Many American Jews originate from this city. Huh? See this? Although Bialis and bagels are cousins, they are not twins. Bialis are just baked, not boiled and later baked like bagels. Instead of a hole in the middle, Bialy has a depression, typically filled with diced onions and poppy seed. It has been described in a Los Angeles Times uh, mentioned book review as the dimpled bread. Bialy united the Jewish community in a way it was eaten uh, by the rich and the poor as well. The rich ate it with uh, soups or uh, smoked fish. To the poor, it was a dish itself. Moreover, Bialystok Jews ate uh, this onion roll with nearly every meal. The rest of the country which didn't quite understand the obsession, called the Jews from this part of the Poland Białystoker Kuchenfresser, which uh, means Biały Eaters. This may be the reason for the Barbara Streisand famous monologue when she says that she is a bagel on a plate full of onion rolls uh, people had for breakfast. Yes, she talks about Bialys. What's your trouble? I'm a The original Bialy in pre-war Bialystok was larger and more flat than today's Bialy. It was sold on the streets along with bagels. The Bialy was brought to the United States by the Polish Jewish refugees in the late 
1800s or early 1900s. They started their bakeries that made bialis and bagels. Bialis became a popular bread and also breakfast for people of New York City and the surrounding areas, especially among American Jews. Many Polish Jews who didn't come from Bialystok had never heard of Bialy, but ironically, when searching of the origin of Bialy, one finds that many people boast on the internet that it was their great-grandfather who was from Bialystok who invented the onion roll. Bialis are an iconic food of New York City and can be difficult to find outside that area. <laughs> Come on, Tony Soprano was obsessed with them. Come on, I just finished my Biali. Go oh, Biali. We got you your Bialis and coffee. Sit, Tony, I'll clear your spot. We got you your Biali. Oh, scoop out that Biali. Do you want something, uh, coffee? Yeah. <laughs> Bialis are generally sold in bagel shops. Well, Biale is not as popular as bagel, but still is a part of New Yorkers' cuisine. The sad fact is, the New York Biale is less common than it once was. It is more of a nostalgia role now. The best known and at the same time the oldest bakery who sells Bialis in New York is Kosar's Bialis, that has existed since 1936. But how is Bialy in Poland? The name Bialy in Bialystok is hmm, defunct. There is no memory of it, nothing. However, in the 21st century, it had its comeback in one of the Bialystok's restaurants. And even if it is called Bialy there, it is only a tiny, tiny two, two and a half inches roll with microscopic onions and poppy seed on it. One, however, will find in Bialystok in regular stores. Cebulash, an onion roll. And here is a twist. Cebulasz Lubelski from another Polish city of Lublin, also known for its Jewish community. Cebulasz Lubelski is a registered name as the mentioned Obwarzanek Krakowski. And surprisingly, this onion roll is the closest to Biale. So why not Cebulasz Bialostocki? After the World War II, there was only a handful of Jews who survived, and even the majority of those emigrated, taking their unusual staple with them. People, however, had taste for their baking goods. So the Polish bakers took on the Jewish recipes. Onion rolls were baked, but people of Lublin liked them more than the people of Białystok did. So, sad history there. Bialy withered in its own city and became a visiting card for another one. The sadder thing even, someone tried to open New York City Bagels Bakery on the main street in Bialystok, but hmm, went bust and had to close it after a few years. Bialystok doesn't have a taste for its bakery heritage anymore. Now you know that the rolls you eat have enough history to stuff you for days. Thank you for watching and remember, you do not have to be gluten free to subscribe to us. Till the next time!